Hello, and welcome to Navigate Autism with Jane Lynn. I'm your host, Jane Lynn Britton. And today I'm really excited to introduce you to a special guest, my daughter, Ashley Britton. She is going to talk with me about siblings. Because you know, as a parent and or a caregiver of a child with autism, the role of a sibling is so important because they're role models. They also inspire our children to play or try new things. It's also challenging for our children who don't have autism because they have needs and sometimes they're their own special needs. So how do we balance both? And I'm really excited that Ashley accepted my invitation to join me today because we wanted to share with you some things that we've learned. And I'm gonna be honest with you. This is not one of those shows that's all roses and sunshine and rainbows because we're not perfect and we don't want to make it appear that way. So it's actually a little bit vulnerable for us and a little bit challenging. But our commitment and our desire to share what we've learned is much stronger. And so we're really excited to be here to talk about some of the things that we've done in the past some of the things I've done in the past that we would like to do differently or would have done differently, as well as some things that we, uh, some ideas or suggestions for how things could be done differently or uh, for going forward. So I'm really excited that you're here with us. And Ashley, thank you for joining me. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. You're such a big part of our life and have been such a part of this experience with William. And first, I'd like to just explain a little bit to our viewers a little bit about that experience. So Ashley is two years older than my son, and she has been with us living through autism for 13 and a half years. And starting off early on, she and her brother had a really strong relationship. They would run and play together. William would run after her and start to try to imitate her. In fact, really young, he was potty training, he was, he was talking, he was really doing everything Ashley did. And then autism came into his life and into our lives. And things got a little bit more challenging. Like we were running to doctors and therapists and IEP meetings and trying to navigate health situations and didn't know what to do, so we took Ashley along in the car with us into all the appointments. There were times we did hyperbaric oxygen treatments, and me, Ashley, and William got into that chamber. <laughs> it was a real family experience. And as they grew, uh, their needs became different, and we got a little bit more separated than I would have liked. I, we also homeschooled William for about eight years, and the whole focus of the family became on William and how we could help him grow and thrive. And at the same time, we were doing the same thing for Ashley, but it was her needs were different and she was in a different school with different friends and trying to support her. And so we, uh, like I said earlier, kind of drifted apart a little bit from a family unit. But now we're starting to bring that back together and we have some, some ways that we're gonna share with you later on how we're doing that. But now that I've kind of explained Ashley, um, and I, I say this because I've said to you when I, you know, earlier, we're just gonna be honest with you and, and talk about our true feelings and observations and, and let it go from there. So Ashley, I would love it if you, in your words, if you would explain what your relationship is like now with your brother. Well, you kind of already took a lot of what I was like thinking, actually. <laughs> so like everything I was going to say, you kind of already described it. But um, I guess now in comparison to how it was in the very beginning, well, actually in the very beginning, I don't have a lot of like distinct or like concrete memories because I was so young. I was maybe four years old when he was diagnosed. So everything that you were saying in the beginning, like where he would run and imitate me, like I have probably zero like recollection of that. And you, I remember even like as I've been growing up, you would kind of tell me these memories where like, oh, you and William would sing together. You would, he would sing you a song right before 
he would go to bed and for me that was kind of hard because I was so young and I could not remember that so I feel like to think that we had that kind of relationship where it was something close to a, a typical sister and brother relationship and I can't remember that that was definitely very hard for me um, growing up especially with the fact that I had so many friends who had that brother and sister relationship and the fact that I like couldn't have that typical one and I, it was just kind of that like really distinct reminder every single day like you don't have a normal relationship with your brother that was definitely hard and like you said um, once you guys started homeschooling William there was kind of like a separation with the schedules and what he needed what I needed and I feel like that was definitely hard and that did put a strain in our relationship because there was so much that he needed to do that was on the schedule and then there was stuff that I had to do like you said in my meantime because I was going to a different school and as I grew up I eventually went off to boarding school so that also kind of took time away from me being at home where I would only maybe come home once a month and only be there for maybe two or three days and then during my winter and spring breaks I would have plans without like with my friends so that also kind of separated us apart so as of today I think we are still like a, we have a strong relationship I love him and I know that inside he loves me even though he can't communicate that to me but as far as like a like a strong like relationship as to how much time we spend with each other that isn't as strong as I wish it would be and hopefully as time goes on that can improve even though I am about to go off to college so that will definitely be a lot harder especially it'll be a lot similar to boarding school but um, I do think it could be a bit stronger and it that is because of how things were when we were kids kind of like how you were saying like where he had to go to therapy and all of these different activities and I had other outside activities like I had soccer I had school events and that just like you can't really do anything about that so right and you know I know it was hard growing up because all of your friends who were girls just happened to have brothers the same age as William exactly yeah. <laughs> so it's like looking in the mirror and I was yeah. thinking like this is what I could have had and exactly. I know when you were a baby or you know, a toddler you really wanted a sibling like so <laughs> badly you wanted someone to play with you and to yeah. kind of grow with you and be there for you and yeah. and you felt well how did you feel when William we found that diagnosis and you felt like the brother that you kind of thought you were having really wasn't at all um, well again when I when he was first diagnosed I was four so I really don't remember that much I really the earliest memory I can really think of is I when I like started to actually have memories I can think of I would just remember having a brother with autism I don't really have a lot of memory of before the diagnosis so I kind of was thrown into this with oh you have a brother with autism and that was kind of my new normal and then when I went out into public and saw that there were brothers and sisters who could actually like talk to each other and communicate with each other and do all these like amazing things that was kind of, like that was like a curveball for me in a way and I like I even remember like I would have I would see like my friends with their siblings and they would always be like saying things like oh like my brother's so annoying and he's doing all of this and like you know that's that's typical brother sister relationship stuff I remember as a kid that kind of hurt me in a way because at the end of the day they have a sibling who they can talk to and relate to even though they might not be like happy at e with each other at that moment like they should be lucky and just grateful that they have that person there whereas I didn't really have that opportunity and yeah like growing up it was just kind of that's what it was and so I kind of had to adjust to that but then also while I was growing up there was this feeling that I kind of actually felt from you and dad where there was you know that feeling of embarrassment or awkwardness so whenever we would go out into public I would kind of 
have that feeling in me and it would I feel like that also kind of put a strain into our relationship and what it could have been in that if we as a family could have gone out into public without feeling this embarrassment or without feeling this shame of having a family member who has a disability I feel like I would have been better with not making it feel awkward and I would have helped like strengthen our relationship in a way and that is actually one of my deepest regrets and something that I have learned over these years to kind of embrace that you know what there really is no normal family like there really is nothing that's normal and I wish that I could have accepted that and just continued on and focusing on my brother instead of well what is normal to society yeah you know you, you raise a good point and you know that I've told you this a lot we, we're doing the best we could we always exactly. do the best we can yeah at every moment, but what I realize now more than ever is the effect of our beliefs on our children, because I didn't come out and tell you I was embarrassed to have a child with autism, or it's hard going out in public, or mm -hmm. what's someone going to say, are we going to interrupt their outing, and what's the judgment, and, and, but I was feeling it, and you, f are, you felt it, it's very obvious, and, and not only did you feel it, but it, it it, you embraced it in a way or, or took it in in such a way that it affected your relationship with your brother. And so that's you know, something that I, I've learned and had I known I would have tried to have done something differently. I mean I think the beautiful thing about the homeschool program and spending more time with him has helped me accept it more and change those beliefs it's a lot later in life though than I wish yeah. it had come for you. Um, but I, I want to tell you though, I, I really appreciate your honesty and it's always helped me, even when I didn't want to hear it, <laughs> it helped me uh, find my way in, in the, the true north because mm -hmm. sometimes we try to ignore it um, based on our feelings and our own judgments. But I did want to ask you, you kind of talked a little bit about this, but I think it's interesting um, and you have such great perception and, and in looking back. So when you do look back, what is or is there anything that you would change either that you did or that we did as a family that um, we would do differently if we had that opportunity? Well actually I was recently thinking about this because we, um, you and I, we went down to Ocean Isle Beach in North Carolina to visit some family members and actually we were visiting family members that I don't think I've ever met before, but um, I while we were there, I kind of got this like feeling as we were just talking and meeting everyone for the first time, and that like there was just this feeling of love and acceptance. And throughout the entire trip, I probably like could just by the end of the trip like know by heart what you were gonna say to every single question because everyone kept asking you about your business and all of the things that you are talking about and recommending like all of your products and like I said by the end of the trip I probably like knew it by heart because you were just talking about it so much and but with everything that you were saying everyone was just giving you such positive feedback and even with when they would ask about William or anything that was related to William or autism everyone was just showing you that kindness and that acceptance and there was no judgment there was no feeling of that awkwardness and I have realized you know, that when we were younger, we had kind of secluded ourselves from the rest of our family, and that kind of put, also put a strain on my relationship with my cousins and my other family on that side. And I realized that this week when we were talking with your brother, my uncle, and we were just talking about our lives, like just day-to-day -day things, and he was saying something, and. I was thinking to myself like wow like I've never known this and I've probably seen him maybe 10 times in my entire life and even that just kind of says like you know wow like that's not a lot because even though like we are kind of far distance wise New Jersey to North Carolina there like weren't that many opportunities because there were times when you and dad felt as if we had brought the whole family together there would be that feeling of awkwardness or that feeling of judgment because we would be bringing William along and we would be bringing along all of those different things that he needed which would you felt kind of would put a strain to other people but 
when I when we went down to North Carolina this week, I realized that that's not the case at all. Like our family is really here to support us. They're here to help us through this journey, and they're having our backs through it. No matter like no matter what, a hundred percent. And in the end, if your family is not doing that, then I think that's when you should question. Like, well, are they the family members that I should go to for help or? For guidance, then, because if they're gonna be judging you at the end of the day for someone in your family or something that deep and personal for you, then why should I like expose myself? But really, I was actually surprised and amazed. I mean, not really surprised because I know that everyone in our family are like amazing people, and not everyone has that amazing and lucky opportunity to like say that, but. It like was truly amazing just to see like how accepting they were of everything that we've been through and how, in a heartbeat, they would be willing to help us with anything. And I feel like had we known that years ago, that that could have been something that we could have changed. And that's something that definitely parents now can understand and like help with their kids. I think that's a really good point because that is something that when I talk to other parents. Of children with autism, we all seem to have similar fears and concerns, and we feel that distance with other family members because often they just don't understand. And then our challenge is how do we help them understand? And I think for myself, I just close myself down from even trying because it's complicated too to travel to North Carolina and to, you know, to take the special food for the special diet. And yeah. you know, the it's sensory is a lot, yeah. lot and, and, and we can't fly, so we have to drive and all of that. So what I find though now is that those are excuses. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, as you know, for the past you know, 10 years, I've really learned yeah. that it's worth the effort and to stop assuming what people are thinking. Exactly. Because usually, actually I find more often than not, people want to help. They just don't know what to say because they're afraid to say the wrong thing. Exactly, and that's why with your explanations and when they ask you those questions, that's yeah. what helps them feel more comfortable and that's what wants them to like mm -hmm. go out there and help, which really I find amazing is that people now are kind of wanting to learn more and help instead of like 10 years ago when it was more of a new topic and people are kind of like, what is that? So, yeah. yeah. Well, that's actually, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm thanking you for that observation because I didn't even make that <laughs> connection this weekend or this past week, but it makes sense is that when you talk, talk openly and honestly and with confidence about something, people want to listen. But that confidence and openness comes from being okay. Like, exactly. I'm okay talking about it and I accept it. So that's interesting. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. It's amazing. Um, so I know that you, and you've shared a lot about the past and some of your feelings and what we could have done differently and definitely not letting our judgments get in the way or, or hold us back from doing things as a family, mm -hmm. number one, and bringing you into that fold with William. Um, but what have you done? I mean, I know what you've done, but I want to, <laughs> I'm going to ask you to share with our viewers what you've done to kind of bridge that gap and to make those stronger connections with your brother? Well, actually, I have a few examples. I know you're thinking of one in particular. I just wanted to throw one short one out there before that. Um, when you and Dad started the homeschooling program, you guys actually offered me kind of this like side job to kind of be like a creative, um, I guess, just assistant and come up with games and activities to help that William you thought would like and as like a nine and ten nine or ten year old and just wanting to help and being like there I helped through that I created activities and um, put together just games that I personally thought William would like and I would offer that to the team members at the time and kind of show them how to do it and I think a few of them actually did it and they said that it worked pretty well and I did that for a little bit until I went to middle school and I became busier with things. <laughs> but um, the one that I think you were um, hitting on was when I was, well actually we did it for two summers, but the summer of 2014 and 2015, I put together this kind of homemade like day camp for William as well as some neighborhood kids about his age. And similar thing, I put together these games and activities that I thought would be fit for 
a typical camp as well as something that William would like. And I put together a schedule of all of these different activities as well as like times for lunch, time for a snack and kind of like a break. And when I was putting this schedule together, I kind of expected to have like, you know, a distinct schedule, like a very strict schedule, like, okay, at this time we're gonna do this, at this time we're gonna do this. And I wasn't really expecting um, William to kind of, like, or just not anyone to kind of like follow that schedule. But I think being able to have that patience and to allow that continu continuity of the schedule and just like let it flow as it is, that kind of really helped as well as showing that to the other counselors who I worked with some of um, the sidekicks that we use as well as some of my friends who helped out. Like we just kind of all let everything flow together. We were helping the kids, you know, kind of stay quiet and help. Like we were kind of trying to make this for William and just help him through everything. So if there was a moment where he ne we needed things to be quiet, we would kind of quiet them down and just help William ease through it. But really taking the time out of a few weeks of the summer and putting together this camp really allowed William to connect with other kids his age as well as be a part of a camp kind of environment which is something that's very common for kids his age and because this experience this experience taught me a lot it actually was the topic of my um, college essay which I submitted to all schools and it really while I while I was even writing the essay like that even taught me more about my own like Self and like what I learned from that and how even though like you might be making this and it might not flow the way that you want things to go it was giving him that kind of childhood experience that he never had because I could tell from his feedback and how he was smiling and actually interacting with all the kids and he was having so much fun and laughing like yeah like it might have not have followed like my original schedule but <laughs> it still worked and he loved it so that was what mm -hmm. I wanted and yeah exactly. exactly so just to give a few more details you <laughs> you had three friends from school that yeah. you you were the leader you, and this is the first year well, yeah. this was the first year yeah. um, but you had so basically you had staff both years yeah yeah and you led them you you came up with the activities and you told them how to support you and you had it four days Mm -hmm. Half days in our backyard, literally in our backyard, in our backyard, which <laughs> yeah. is great. And you did have a schedule, so I mean, mm -hmm. there was a lot of organization behind it, which gave you the yeah. foundation to allow you to be flexible, mm -hmm. which was great because you had there was a lot of planning. You bought a lot of things or used things from around the house to create water activities or yeah. target practice or jumping activities or mm -hmm. kind of like a field day, yeah, kind of camp experience and. Uh, what are, so it would be really interesting, I think really helpful too, for our viewers if you could tell just some of the activities that you did in case they wanted to do their own summer camp. I mean, you kind of touch face and like you're just, <laughs> you're just taking like, the words out of my mouth. Oh my gosh, we really are twins. But, <laughs> um, yeah, like target practice, we did a water balloon toss. We did a, uh, I remember the second year we did a slip and slide, which was, a huge hit because all you really need is just a water slide. You can even use a tarp and some soap and the kids will love it because it's anything like that is just fun for a kid around that age. Right. Um, let's see what else. We did one game I remember where we took this kind of like parachute and we had a rubber chicken and it, it was literally we just threw it in the middle we would just like be flapping it and the kids were just they thought it was the funniest <laughs> thing of a I rubber know. chicken flying in the air and like of course like me and my friends were just like okay you know like we'll just keep this going because for us it's just a rubber chicken flowing in the air but for the kids it was something so funny and honestly you can be so creative like just find something around the house that is obviously safe for these kids to play with and you can just be creative and come up with your own thing like just get a hula hoop and tack it to a tree and maybe get like a ball, like um, a bean kind of bag ball or something and just throw it into the hoop and make it like a target practice. And it's something as simple as that, as long as it's like fulfilling, I guess, some kind of like time out of your day that you think the kids will enjoy. And even if your child with autism doesn't necessarily like find it as fun, maybe have another activity back like in the, mm -hmm. like in the back of your head, like just lined up, like maybe fill up some water balloons or maybe get Perfect. some like play like water guns and you can have like a water fight. Honestly, like it's, Great. you can do anything. That's perfect. Yeah. 
Well, Ashley, we're running out of time, but I, oh, I would gosh. like to ask you if there was one thing you could suggest to siblings that are watching, what is it that you would mm -hmm. suggest to them or tell them? Um, one thing that I personally would suggest is to be patient as hard as it is because I remember, I'm first of all not a patient person, so it was very hard, but just know that with what your parents are doing, it is a very hard task and know that they are trying their hardest to kind of make everyone happy and just to have that patience and know that even though your needs might not be met 100% at that time, that they somehow will be for something else in the end and that your parents do love you and you are loved and you are just as important. And also, I guess just to like kind of how we were touching up in the end, like be helpful, be interactive and kind of come up with your own ways to like just help out, like how I helped out with the program that you did for Williams homeschooling and as well as the summer camp. And then also a side um, advice for the parents, I guess, is to kind of, <laughs> I know, I, I kind of have to throw it out there, but mm -hmm. to find that time of the week where you can kind of take time out of your uh, like weekly schedule and just go out with the family and have time for everyone so everyone feels included. And there really is no separation in schedules because I think that time together really solidifies the relationship and the strength within that and just the love and support and everything like that. And to really, like to do that does take a lot of courage and I know that it is hard but to go, to go out in public and everything. But at the end of the day, you know, it really does not matter someone else's opinion of you outside of the house and just to, like just really in that moment, family is what matters. and. That would re that will really show to the sibling, uh, like especially to include them into that like family bonding moment. So I think right. that is important. Well, I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> thank you. No problem. <laughs> w wonderful feedback, and thank you so much for sharing and, and no coming from the heart. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, well, you're welcome. And I'm really excited because next time we're going to talk. We're going to actually meet William's best friends, and we're going to talk about how to create friendships, and some of the things that we've done to help William create two, and actually has more best friends, some of the activities we've done, and you may even get a chance to meet William. So stay tuned. And until then, be well, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Navigate Autism with Jane Lynn.